forecast is for rain, rain and more rain. Take the Great British Tourist, one holiday airline, a hundred holiday destinations, three million passengers, and let's face it, something's bound to go wrong. Just a minute. I don't give a damn whether I'm to agree it. You should have given us this plane when you knew for a fact nothing not was going to come. I didn't forget it, Edward. It was in there already. Hey, bye, come. Over the next ten weeks, emotions run high. We've got a problem. <laughs> time runs out. And fuel runs low. The last go at 28,000 feet. We might not even make it. It's the story of one summer season on board the Holiday Airline. Ibiza, clubbing capital of the world visited by a million British tourists every summer. It's an island of sun, sea, and this season, stress. We don't want to be at the airport for yeah, 12 hours. Yeah. 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 Were we asked to attend a meeting here at 12.30 yeah. or not? Yeah. Yeah. Do we just want, we want... We only want one meeting. Somebody stand at the front and just answer the questions. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. That's all we want. That's all we want. And the cause of all the drama? These Spanish coach drivers are on strike, leaving the island's 100 coaches lying empty, which means there's no easy way to get anyone to the airport. These holidaymakers are due to fly home with Monarch early tomorrow morning. The reps want to ferry them to the airport in taxis, but with everyone else after transport, they'll need to leave 11 hours early. It's a plan that's not going down well. If you cart us all off to the airport, we're going to be stuck at the airport. We'd rather be stuck here than at the airport. Sort something out for us here. Taxis are still going from 5 o'clock. We will keep you all updated as and when we know what is going on. We shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. Oh, we shall not be moved. I'm bloody angry. It's shock, but it's disgusting. We've got our room till 6 o'clock. When we're not handing our keys in, we stop in put. Monarch must get a 1,000 Ibiza passengers home this weekend and take a further 3 million people on holiday this summer. It takes a certain degree of planning. You'll need 22 aircraft, 55 million gallons of fuel, 3,476,000 meals, 240 tonnes of ice, exceptional staff dentistry, and several tons of regulation red lipstick. You'll also need a northern base and ground staff you can rely on. Michael Shelbourne is a supervisor for Aviance, Monarch's Manchester handling agents. Uh, I've been in the airport now just over six years. Before that, I was in a hotel as a, a manager, um, working with the great British public. The only difference being is I'm putting them on seats instead of beds. <laughs> There was two of them that looked as if they were, they'd had a few. And he's developed a nose for trouble. But I wanted to see him going down a bridge, but I missed him going down a bridge. Should we go and have a look? He suspects a passenger on this flight to Turkey may be too drunk to fly. As he had a drink in the terminal before he boarded the aircraft. About two. He must have known how many he had. Well, two pounds. Right, well, I'm just going to have a word with the captain, all right, and I'll come back to you in a minute, OK? The crew decide there's only one way to see if he's safe to fly. She wants him to walk. To see him walk. She wants him to just to walk up here, just to see he's all right to walk. It's a simple test. To make his holiday, the passenger must walk two metres in a straight line. It's a close call. It's down to the captain, really, now, um, whether he goes on the flight or not. But he needs to make a decision soon. He's going to miss his slot. 
Ibiza, and some serious crisis management is underway. Let's just get it right now. Brian, you're going to help with reception to call the taxis. Reception. Natalie, you're going to be at the top of the road directing taxis down. You Behind the hotel, away from 100 fuming passengers, head rep Angie Romano is supervising the salvage operation. Brian, you need to get me telephone cards. Right, yeah. I've got that, 5,000... Yeah. 5, 5, 5, 5, 000. 000 telephone cards, nappies, yeah. baby milk and baby, baby food. food. Can we now get it straight, yeah? what we're informing guests, yes. yeah? If anybody starts going off saying, oh, but my flight's delayed, the flights haven't left. left if the flight is delayed an hour, we will tell you it's delayed an hour. If it isn't, we will tell you, yeah? Yeah. Is everybody happy with that? Fine, yeah, yeah. yeah. no problem, as okay. long as the guests don't I know <laughs> people are going to shout at you, and I know <laughs> that they're going to be blue in the face, but at the end of the day, yeah, it's one of these things that it's out of our control. Are you going to supply us with boxing gloves and gum shields? <laughs> 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 As long as we all keep our chin up, yeah, we're doing fine up to now. Yeah, let's keep our chin up, let's yeah, let we'll nobody upset you, yeah, yeah, and we'll be fine. Back at base, the passengers on this flight are jetting off for their two-week holiday in Turkey. But one family won't be joining them. Steve Gormley was judged too inebriated to travel. I'm a prison officer. I don't uh, cause problems. I'm a law-abiding citizen. And I was caught in an airport, I've had two bottles of lager, and I was prohibited from going to a plane for no reason. Legally, they can't actually travel when they're under the influence of alcohol, because uh, it's against passenger safety for everybody else that's on the flight. I mean, anything could happen, we don't know him. His wife says he's fine, that he wouldn't cause any trouble, but we don't know that. I mean, he's had, he's had a lot more to drink than this on other flights, and they've never, ever stopped him. And he's never been drunk, What's as in violently drunk. Steve believes there's another cause right. for his condition. I've had sleeping medication with tamazepam and nitrazepam, and I'm placed here in Manchester Airport. Could not board my plane um, to my armrest in Turkey. So now it's just basically to see whether he can sober up for later on, or whether he can get it out of the system, whether they'll accept him on the flight, because at the moment nobody else will take him either in that state. Desperate to get away, the couple are determined to find another airline willing to take them. Yeah. I know. I'm not drunk, I'm Steve, on medication. Steve, we all know about it. We you shut up. It's not, gonna, it's not going to change anything, is it? Irrespective of Steve's current state, there are no seats for 24 hours. It's no good tomorrow evening. We're going today. Steve, how can you go today? She's just said there's no seats. In Ibiza, the rumour mill's gone into overdrive and the reps' calming tactics don't appear to be working. There's no flights at all from the UK to here. And there's no flights leaving the UK to these islands. Yeah, and that's, but that's from, from, that's from England. Yeah. That's from you people, from no, England. no, but I've got somebody England. at the airports, yeah, yeah at the airports, yeah. and the flights are coming in as normal. There's so queues, yeah. yeah. Well, we, well, we, we at the end of the day, we wouldn't take you to an airport if there was no flight coming in, would we? Well, we hope not. Our, our first arrival isn't until half past one in the morning. There is no flights from East Midlands, Manchester or Birmingham. But at the end of the day, sir, you were going home, yeah? So at the moment, there are flights going out, so that's all that you need to be concerned about. Yeah. Yeah? So I would suggest that you enjoy the rest of the sunshine that you've got, yeah, before you do get on the plane and the weather's not as nice as at home, all right? We'll keep you informed at all times of any changes, yeah? If there is any flight that is delayed for a substantial amount of time, we will make other arrangements for you. In Manchester, it's all got too much for Steve's wife, Julie. She's managed to get the family onto another flight to Turkey, but has to pay an extra £65 for each new ticket. Obviously, she was upset about it, because um, she's lost a day of her holiday. Um, so she's got to wait until tomorrow so she can get a flight. Not only do we have to pay for the holiday, extra money for, per person, now the same when we get to Delamount, we have to pay for our own transfer. Come on. Which is two hours by coach. Come on. It's just a nightmare. Every year, nearly a thousand British holidaymakers miss all or part of their holiday because they're too drunk to travel. Listen, I'm a come on, drunk Michael. I'm a psychopath. I'm just <laughs> got into wrong. bed and they rang. Come on, I'm Michael, explain why we're to pay 65 quid per person. Answering there, uh -huh. answering that. Come on. Answering the camera. What for? Why would you not have flight? It's not his job. Come on. Because you're under the influence of alcohol. I'm not under the influence of alcohol. I know, it's because you shouldn't have worked. It's gone. He can't answer it. 
Yeah. All on the day's work. <clears throat> a new season, a new intake of cabin crew. In Manchester and Luton, 319 new recruits will be plucked from these scrubbed, smiling applicants. I want the job because um, I love working with people. Because I enjoy working with people mainly. I enjoy meeting people. I know personally I'm good with people. To work for this company, you've got to show you can look good in a uniform. We want to see skirts at a decent length. We want to see legs. We do want to see the, the female candidates in skirts. We don't want to see any really outrageous hairstyles and we like people to make a bit of an effort with makeup as well. Every failing is noted and discussed. Only one in three will get through. If you can't get the company's name right, then already, mm -hmm. first impressions, it's not a good start, is it? She didn't understand the questions. Very expressive face, isn't it? But, uh, again, not good eye contact. Okay. Yep. Leanne Stobbo is singularly determined to fly. This isn't the first airline she's applied to. She's already suffered rejection. Yes, yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you. I've been trying now for just two years. And you think by going to different interviews, you gain that experience. But each interview is just as nerve-wracking as the first. Outside, waiting and waiting are Leanne's dedicated parents. Sometimes it can be that she's in there for an hour and then she has to come out because they're not going to further the interview anymore. Um, so she has to come home. So we're here just in case she only gets through, say, the first hour. As it is at the moment, she's been gone for three or four hours. So fingers crossed. No news is good news, <laughs> That's right, no news is good news. It's taxi time in Ibiza, but a passenger mutiny is underway. Look, if you don't want to go in the taxi, then that's up to you. But at the moment, as you can see... There are 200 people to go to the airport. Yeah, Our flight is at past five in the morning. I've got people refusing to get in taxis. Um, the only thing is, I've had a taxi driver say to me that he reckons within the next half hour I'm not going to get any more taxis. They don't want to go back at this time and stay outside the airport all night. And what am I going to be doing? Nothing! So what, what's it's better stuck there? there? Oh, stuck here, it's oh, better for you. We're stuck in the airport, that's it, isn't it? Oh, there's a restaurant yeah. there now, the one... Oh, so how much is it going to cost for me? Oh, I fed my four children, six of us for breakfast. I'm then going to have a situation where then, if I can't get taxis, I'm, I'm in real problem then. Because at the end of the day, the only way I can get these people to the airport is in a taxi. I've got no other means of transport. Back at the airport, you guessed it, a passport uh, problem. I didn't lose it. I just must have taken it out of my handbag and not put it back. And Carol Rivet is beginning to flap. Yeah, I've got nothing much in there. But she's not been able to check in at the moment, so I'm only thinking that that's what she's lost as a passport, which means she can't travel. Yeah. Is that bag in the car? Which bag? OK, let's just... Where did you last have... Did you have it at home? At home. And then you picked it up and brought it in with you? I don't know. I can't remember. It was all such a rush. Um, who dropped you off? Which, uh, has somebody dropped you off? Have you checked in the car? Have you checked in the car? Well, I haven't checked in the car. But Check in the car just in case it has dropped out. Right. I hope she's not lost it, otherwise she's not going to go anywhere. I don't know how it's come out. I didn't forget it, Edward. It was in there already. What's in that one? Have you had a look in those as well? Unless the passport turns up in the next five minutes, Carol won't be on her flight to Malaga. I know what I did. I took it out of my bag to put it with yours, and I couldn't have done it. I must have taken it out and put it on the table. At home? Yeah. Is it in, how far away do you live? Oh, 120 oh, hours. miles. <laughs> um, has anybody got a key to the house? Yes. Yeah. But they can't bring it. Who can oh, bring no. it? Get a digital video camera and hook it up to your internet and then... Oh, don't be silly, yeah. Edward. See it, please. Um, you two will have to go on without me. Well, if you can do that, that's even better, because there is a charge to transfer it over, and then it'll be, only, it'll be easier to find one seat than it will be for three. Yeah, you'll have to go on without me and go to get John and Kay's on the bus. Are you going to be all right you? You'll have to. Do you yeah. understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can right do that. Of course I'll be all right on my own. Uh, are we going to meet you when... Oh, don't worry, you'll... Have, a, have another look through these. I'll go and speak to everyone and see when the next flight is. Um, and then we'll wait to see what happens with the car. OK. 
Oh, stop it. Three hours into the taxi revolt, and even the stalwarts are beginning to crack. You're not driving. We're going to the airport. I can't believe after them kicking off so much, they've got in a taxi. They're off in ice about it, they're right? They've been biting our heads. Thanks, Brian. They've been so nice. Oh, what up? Bye, Brian. Oh, See you later. Bye. Thanks, Brian. You've been a great help. But now, before I was like, I'm going to get on to your boss. <laughs> Cheers, my boss. Go on, hell. See you later. See you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. In Luton, Leanne Stobbo has given it her all. Well, she said it all recently. She said, Mum, if it takes seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times, I will be back and they will take me on. <laughs> Until they get sick of seeing me, I will be back. Finally, uh, this young lady, Leanne. She looks lovely. This is her dream. This is what she wants to do, OK? Um, but unfortunately, to me, um, <laughs> she let it down on first impressions with these, these pictures. You know, she thinks that these actually portray to us um, a bubbly, vivacious personality um, who enjoys meeting people, um, where, unfortunately, I haven't quite taken it that way. Are you ready? Up in Manchester, Nick Robotham is also under pressure. <laughs> His weight's fine. Got a lighter than me. But... I'm not so sure. I'm not, I'm not the tallest of guys in the world. But I, I, the, the minimum standard is five foot three. <laughs> five foot one, two, five foot three. He makes the height, but will he make the grade? <laughs> right, long day. Let's get this wrapped up and go home. Um, I feel, I feel it was quite positive, but at the same time, I don't think you can ever be too sure. If I don't get in, then I've had a good try. Um, to transfer the ticket across is £75 as well, but you'd come back on your original ticket because the, the charter ticket... In Manchester the Airport, same. Carol Rivett still hasn't found her passport. It's not in the car by the looks of it. It's just coming back now. Oh, you all have to go, we you all... two. Go and check in. You'll just have to make your own way to Bologna, or so, yeah. and I'll get there when I can. Oh, how do you make your own way to Bologna? Oh, you go on the bus. Sophie knows right. how to do it. Okay. Sophie, aged 21, and Edward, 19, will travel alone, and Mum has a confession to make. Yes, that I've got illegal herbs in here. Tarragon. <laughs> But being so come from a foot and mouth area, I was slightly worried. You need to make your way to the gate. No? Okay. Yeah. All right, cheers. Back over here. Bye. Okay. Bye. See, See you. you. I'll ring Kay and tell her the news. Yeah, OK. OK. Have fun, Mum. Yes, I will. OK. See All you. All right. Do you know which way to go to? Uh, which way? Yeah. Cheers. To go through See the departure you. lounge. I'm going to go home and hope that I can find my passport, because I haven't the foggiest idea what I did with it. Meanwhile, in Ibiza, head rep Angie Romano is in for a long night. She's got a 1,000 tired passengers, one exceptionally overcrowded airport, and four outbound flights to cope with. All right, well, here we are. Welcome to Ibiza Airport. What's in store for us? Can I just say I'm a bit nervous, actually? <laughs> oh, there's people everywhere. Oh, my God. Come on. It looks like a refugee camp. 24 hours into the strike, there are an estimated 20,000 tourists stuck at the airport. The reps were telling lies, weren't they? They said there was nothing at the airport, you just walk right in the airport and everything's all right. I'm sitting outside on the pavement. Yeah. You sure sent me out here yeah. and you were taxi. Yeah. No you admitted that? Yeah, there's no delays on any of the flights there, is there? Yeah? At the moment, you admitted here, everybody to me is now. You here. sent me out there where I could have stayed in the hotel. No, there's nobody left in the hotel now. Yes, but I could have, we, we all could have stayed there. Well, it's absolute shambles, isn't it? Everybody's here in the same boat. Every company, no matter what nationality you are, are here, yeah, because that way nobody misses a flight and they, and they can get home. Most of these passengers have at least another five hours to wait.
It's Judgment Day in Manchester. Today, Nick Robotham and Leanne Stobbo will learn whether they'll be flying off as cabin crew this summer. Today could be the changing point for me. Um, it could mean me moving, it could mean a total change in career. And what other 19-year-olds get to jet across the world and meet different people. For Nick, this could mean leaving his job as a shop assistant. And for Leanne, her job in a restaurant. That was here. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Come on, then. Let's have it over. <laughs> Got it. Got the job. No, it's a rare regret again. I have great pleasure in offering you employment as a cabin crew member with Monarch Airlines. Thank you for the interest you've shown, blah, 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 blah. No reason. <laughs> no, there never is, is there? Oh, I'm mega pleased. I'm really happy. There we go. <laughs> Do you cry? Yeah, I lost. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> Sorry. I've now got to go and ring everybody up about 25 people and tell them I haven't got in again. My friends, my nana, everybody, so... You've done it before. Come on. <laughs> come on, Sean, get all right, come on. Cup of tea, eh? Hand my notice in tomorrow. Nice one. <laughs>